Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey, welcome back. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. Today, we are talking about the power of the thank you note. And what I have seen a lot on the socials in LinkedIn and in Fishbowl is that people aren't sending them. They said, well, you know, I shook the person's hand in the interview or at the end of the the Microsoft Teams meeting, I said, thank you. And that should be enough. And like, (laughs) this makes me want to like, ah, Sending a thank you note, whether it is digital or handwritten, and we're going to talk about, you know, some of that in this episode, is showing the recipient and those involved that you go above and beyond, that you have an attention to detail, and that you care. And for this conversation today, I am bringing on my friend and former colleague, Christian Schwartz. He spearheads the Montgomery Group, which is a boutique search firm that he established specializing in senior level marketing and media placements. He is a strategic leader that is renowned for elevating premier brands through a blend of both strategic hiring and consulting expertise. His experience spans Wired Magazine, Razorfish, Sapient. He's also collaborated with influential Fortune 500 brands like Visa, Clorox, Verizon, Unilever, Hewlett Packard. And I'm bringing him on because while we were colleagues in different offices within a very large 100,000 person plus holding company, he was known for his thank you notes. And he actually hand wrote thank you notes on gorgeous stock. And it made him stick out for me to me in the amount of people that we were talking to on a regular basis. And I work with amazing people in all of the offices, but here is someone that stuck out that I never, to this day, I have never met him in person. And one of these days, one of us is going to get to Atlanta or New York City when the other one is in town and we're actually going to grab a cup of tea or to coffee. I brought Christian on because he, I think, is one of the masters in thank you notes And we have a discussion. We agree, I would say, 99% on everything. He keeps his thank you notes. Myself living in a New York City apartment, I take pictures of my thank you notes and save them. We're going to talk about why we do that. We also talk about how this is about your professional brand. A professional brand is about a few different things. But if you think about it from the lens of uniqueness, making sure you have a point of difference and you're differentiating yourself, There's a professionalism in it, an attention to detail in it, making yourself memorable, driving with consistency and authenticity, and obviously that emotional connection, which is all part of a brand. I also like to think that a brand consists of, a professional brand, consists of the personality and your point of difference you bring, your proficiency or your skills and your sales that you bring, and then also it often connects to the pain point. And the pain point can be anything from the thing that annoys the heck out of you, the thing that, oh, I'm never going to want to go through this thing again, right? It's that, that pain point that you then take a stand on. And that's what connects to you, that you are representing that not on my watch, we are not going to not appreciate our customers or our clients or our employees. So we're going to always send thank you notes, right? That's where it connects in. So give a listen. As always, I want to hear from you. Do you send handwritten notes? Do you send digital notes? Do you send text messages? Do you hit them up in the DMs on LinkedIn and say thank you that way? Do you think that they're silly and you don't want to do them at all? I want to hear from you. So either comment on my socials, email me at hello at jillgriffincoaching.com. Friends, embrace possibility. Be thankful. Send those notes. And as always, be kind. I hope you enjoy this episode and I'll see you next time. Christian, welcome back. Thank you for having me. (laughs) All right, my friends. Christian and I were talking because I saw a post on LinkedIn about the power of thank you notes and how the handwritten thank you note 
being, you know, such a lovely thing to receive. And then of course, the actual typed written thank you note is also equally important. And then I was wandering around and fishbowl and some other places, and I was seeing the disdain for people from people saying they hate thank you notes. They never write them. They don't include cover letters. I mean, sometimes they're optional, sometimes they're not, but if they're not, you need a cover letter. And how people just feel like they're not needed. And oh my gosh, here's my friend Christian that I've known for many years that has these gorgeous stock quality thank you notes. It's one of the things that built our relationship because every time we talked, I got a gorgeous thank you note from Christian in the mail. And it's what built our relationship. He lives in Atlanta. I live in New York City. We wouldn't have probably met. Well, we work for the same holding company, but we probably wouldn't have met at some point. So I want to talk to you about this, Christian, because you and I completely disagree with some of the wisdom out there that, oh, you don't need thank you notes and you don't need to do anything, um, cover letters or anything that, that, that goes the extra step. My work stands for itself. What say you? <laughs> where, 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 where to get started? Um, send it, send the handwritten thank you note. And, and I think one thing that I've realized is that marketers fail in marketing themselves and that we spend time focusing on the customer experience, the customer journey, surprise and delight, but yet is an email in your inbox. No one's, no one gets an email in their inbox and is happy about it. Right. So you're going to send somebody a thank you note via an, an email or some people don't even send those. I would say maybe 50% of people send email thank yous, much less a handwritten note. And all I can say is, I love receiving a handwritten thank you note. It is amazing. It feels good. And it's an extension of your brand. It's how you think about yourself. It's how you feel about yourself. And it takes two minutes. It probably costs $2. Why wouldn't you? I, I can't think of a single reason why, why you wouldn't do it, but I mean, you said so many things that I want to come back to. So the first thing you said was how many marketers forget that they have to also market themselves. Whether you're going for an opportunity internally, whether you want to network and make connections within the industry you work in, or whether you're actually interviewing outside of the company you're currently at, or you're unemployed and you're looking for your next opportunity, it is a marketing campaign, people. You are the product. The sell sheet is the resume. We need to make yeah. sure that we are marketing yourself. And part of that, and that is the other thing you said that I love, Christian, is it's about the extension of your brand. What does your brand stand for? And you show me those things by the way you show up around the experience of what we call the job interview and sending me a thank you note, right? One, it makes me, it makes it memorable. I work with a lot of recruiters doing what I do as an executive and career coach, right? It's made me, it's made you memorable to me and why we continue to build our relationship over the years. It's the attention to detail, you know, digital communication. If, if that's, that's what works for you, that's the very least table stakes as writing thank you note. And it's showing that attention to detail in that handwritten note that I just think is such that extra personal touch that creates that emotional impact that isn't that what you want? And you said it when we were talking before, Christian, about don't you want to show them that you're going to go and think of that attention to detail or go that extra mile or be really thoughtful when you're in the job? And this is one of the ways to show it. Yeah, it's, you know, when I when I started the Montgomery Group, I remember this specifically. I went to Starbucks and I sat down and I was thinking about, what is my positioning, right? And you start thinking about upper right-hand quadrant transformation. Is this some sort of transformative technology? And I came to the realization that, you know, no, it's about relationships. And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, what's it about? It's about showing up. It's about authentic. It's being real. It's following through and delivering. Sure, the upper right-hand quadrant stuff exists. And it, it was a light bulb that went off, which is people are in this digital era and they send text messages and they send LinkedIn messages. And it's like, you know what, how do I genuinely say thank you for someone taking the time to speak with me? Nobody needs to speak with me. Right. And, and how do I genuinely say thank you An email? Come on, you're jamming someone's inbox, right? You're going to get lost. 
I mean, there's a chance, again, the email breaks through, but the odds are they have newsletters going into that email box, plus every other person in their company is going <laughs> into that email box. You're going to get lost. So the last two jobs that I had, I remember I started work and on the first day, the hiring manager had my thank you notes sitting on their desk. Oh. And they saved it for a good period of time. And it just, it just completely stuck with me of just how important it is. And also too, is to your point of, of good card stock, which is Early on in my career, I remember this was before I knew anything about letterpress and, and printed materials, but there were there were some senior people that were evaluating someone's business card. It was kind of like American Psycho, and they're like, it's letterpress. <laughs> look, at the, look at the card stock. And I think it was one of the Goodby cards in San Francisco, maybe, because they were always letterpress and they were beautiful. And they gave me advice and they just said, you know, whenever the time comes, you have to pick you know, business card, letterhead, et cetera, pick something so nice, they'll never throw it away. Mm. And it's true. And I have, I have a drawer full of cards that people have sent me because I feel bad throwing it away. Yeah. Like, and so I keep it and, you know, yeah. Hey, if you can stick in someone's mind like that, that's pretty amazing. One yeah. other thing too, is there was a search that I worked on with a fortune 50 company, an incredible role. The candidates were all, everybody wanted this role. It was an incredible role. And the hiring manager called me and said, I'm really challenged by this. The entire finalist slate, nobody has sent a thank you note. No way. And we were discussing whether we should start over and how important it is, or is it a matter of just that we are aging, we're not even that old, and that we should lower our expectations. And, and it's interesting, but I think, why do you need to lower your expectations? Mm. If you can raise the bar you as a marketer differentiate yourself. Yeah. So I think that's a good point. So let's look at the other side of it, right? So anyone listening, you know, if you're newer in your career, Gen Z, millennial, what I often hear is that, you know, you've grown up with digital communication so that it's the norm just to doing emails and texts and like social messages through social media, any of those platforms are just more familiar with you. And that's fine if everyone involved in the process is your peer in generation, right? But we know that a workplace isn't. So you need to, again, if you're thinking about ways of your personal brand, you need to think through maybe one of the persons on the interview you do send an email to or you write them a thank you through LinkedIn if that's how you're connected. But really think through, again, it's that attention to detail, the people you might be meeting with and who you think would really appreciate. I would say send everyone a handwritten note, but again, that's what we understand. So the second thing is the instant gratification, right? That expectant for instant responses, the speed of digital communication. You're expecting that you're going to send something and you're going to get a, a, an email back from the person right away. You might, you also might be buried under a thousand emails in their box. I'll tell you, there was a woman once, and yes, I hired her, that after the interview, she went out to the lobby, hand wrote her note and delivered it back, like clearly figured out a way to negotiate back with the security guard to get back in, to leave the handwritten note at reception for me. And then like the next time I popped through reception, they were like, oh, you have a letter, a hand delivered letter here for you. And it was yeah. the thank you note for the woman. I mean, talk about speed. And yes, she got the job, genius, but left a double impression, not only having brought the stationery with her to the job interview, but took the time and wrote a really thoughtful note. Um, you know, you talked about you save them all. I understand some people might have environmental concerns. Okay, fair enough. I laugh and think, well, I live in a New York City apartment. I don't have a home in Atlanta. So I don't know that I have the space for all the handwritten notes. But people, from a mindset standpoint, I have a photograph I took with my camera of every thank you note I've ever received. I have thank you notes from clients, my days back in Microsoft and Coca-Cola, pe people who wrote me, senior CMOs of those companies who wrote me thank you notes for the work that I did, that I have a photograph of. And I have a file on my Google folders, my Google Drive, that is called thank yous. Because on the days where you are 
it just feels heavy. There is nothing better than to go and open that thank you drawer, that thank you file and read the thank yous you've got. So if you know what emotional connection that does for you, some level of that emotional connection and that meaning, that that grace is going to hit someone else. What do you got, Christian? I love that you do that. I have the same I have the same folder and it's when you're running your own company, you will have incredible days and you will have tough days. And if you're in the middle of a tough day, it's sometimes nice to go to that folder and it's like, oh, things are great. It's I'm I'm a fan. Look, just just send it and send send I, I say send the email and send the handwritten note because it. double it up. They're dub, because people they may not get the handwritten note. The the corporate mailroom has always been a little bit of a mystery. And especially with COVID now, it can make it more challenging or post post COVID. But I think it's a matter of sending both. And I've also just asked. And you're not sending it to their home. Let me be clear. <laughs> you are not stalking oh. and finding out their home address unless they have made that known to you. Okay. So it's funny you say that because during COVID, I struggled and I stopped sending thank yous because to say, hey, what's your home address felt a little bit awkward. And I've been able to, with people returning to office, you, you can obviously direct it to the office, but I think at the same point, if someone is working from home, it's a matter of just saying, you know, if you're comfortable, what is the best mailing address? Totally. I'd, like, I'd like to send something to you and I've never had anybody not, you know. Be okay with that. Again, it's yeah. asking, asking someone uh, how they be treated. I'd like, I'd like to send you a thank you note. If you're comfortable, what is the, what is the best address? And right. I've never had someone you know, not be okay with that. But I think it's just, you know, send send the email within 24 hours. Now, I, I am curious with you on this of length. And I, like, for example, my handwriting is atrocious. I call it artistic. I think you have amazing handwriting. It's distinctive. It looks like a creative. <laughs> uh, I keep it brief because it's not, it's not legible. I give my children and my wife holiday cards and I have to read them for them. Um, but... I also think it's, I just think it's good to be sincere and I've had people send me email thank you notes and it's paragraph upon paragraph. And I'll be honest, I don't want a paragraph, but I think it's more of a, a a truly honest and sincere, heartfelt thank you. And if you can summarize in an authentic way, you know, maybe why you're the fit. Great. But I feel like this kind of cut and paste or, you know, or God forbid it's some chat GPT generated thing, which is atrocious. People know. People the- know, and also like you don't use those words in your regular language. So, <laughs> yeah. and I think it's like, who who are you as a human? And that's and if I can see a glimpse of that, that's who we're hiring. Right. And that's that that to me is what is what wins the day. So, so here's what I would say to that. And again, I love that. Again, we're not dif- we're not differing in our opinion. It's just different angles. And I would probably use the. Um, the email communication to be a little bit more specific about the role. If there was something that after I left the interview that I feel like I wanted to drive home or, um, you know, acknowledge or pull out, I might include that in the digital communication. I don't, I agree with you. This is not paragraphs. This is like, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's 50 to a hundred words. We're talking like succinct because no one has time. Plus most people are reading on their mobile device, not on their actual laptop. So it's like, how many times you're going to scroll up the page. So I think that you could put more detail in the digital communication. Also, I don't have to decipher handwriting. So maybe it's affirming some of that, but I think the handwritten one is again, hitting on that, those parts of like, what was it about the conversation that you um, enjoyed that you're appreciative for? How can you create that emotional impact and think about it as creating a relationship? You may not get this job, but that doesn't mean that you wouldn't necessarily meet that person at another time in another role and come across them. And it's about, again, building that brand. I think it's really important. And the research, which is I was going to touch on, there's also research to show about it. There is a book called The Power of the Handwritten Note um, by Kumar and Epley, and it talks really about how um, – People consistently underestimate the positive impact of expressing gratitude through handwritten notes and that the study shows that recipients feel more surprised and happier than the um, intenders 
had anticipated. So that idea of I get my lump of mail, which is, you know, some dead magazines and maybe a random bill that I forgot to go paperless on. And then there's a handwritten note for me. That's a thank you note. How nice. What are your thoughts? I have a friend who recently started a company and it's a little bit of a tangent, but this will make sense. And he said, if my company is successful and I, I had a short circuit, literally, I was like, if couldn't, couldn't even believe he was saying that it's like, it is not if you, you have to will yourself into wherever you want to be and who you are. And, and, you know, I don't want to get all woo woo, but it's just, you, you manifest what you want to be. And I think that's where the thank you note, even if the thank you note, I don't even know if 50% of my thank you notes make it. I'm still going to send them because Mm -hmm. I'm putting putting that energy out there and just be that person, show up up. and and just care. And I just think there's such a a shortage of, of that. I've received, this is crazy. I've received multiple thank yous to my thank you notes. (laughs) <laughs> and, and no, it's, thank you. no thank you <laughs> and it's it just it, it literally it literally blows my mind and the person's like i want to show you my stationery and i'll tell you right now that person is sealed in my mind forever i'm sealed in their mind yeah. and we and we share that connection i also think something that's important is you know let's say you meet with an executive and the you know support staff help schedule the meeting send an email to the support staff too. Yes. Yes. Because let's be honest, that's the real. They don't get appreciative. And that's just, just every, every time don't send it to that person. Don't, don't miss that. That is, and it's just, it's the right thing to do. And those people will sometimes take it for granted and forgotten. And you know, who doesn't need a little love? We all need a little love. I mean, I had a client recently tell me that it was a face-to-face interview, which a lot of our interviews are also being done virtual, right? But it was a face-to-face interview. And she was able to figure out enough about the structure that she knew that she would be greeted most likely by someone in the support staff who would guide her to meet the person that was doing the interview. She brought the support staff person a gift, just a little gift, Um like not again, not every place would this would be okay for, but she brought a, a $20 gift card to Starbucks and a cute coffee mug, which feels benign enough, right? It's not payola, it's not, right, but just was like, here, hope you have a bright day. And you know, we'll see what happens as we go on. But I assure you, the next time she emails or follows up, that person who escorted her in and got the gift card and the coffee mug is going to be like, oh, this person gets it. Yeah. It's just the, again, just, just be, be, be that person. Be that person. Right. I think it's just kind of just, just show up in every way. And it, and it sounds so strange, but it's just so important. But I also think too, you know, look, if you're Jill, let's say I'm going to hire you and put you on a, you know, it's, 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 you're going to lead marketing for a fortune 50 brand and you can't send a thank you note. How are you going to treat that brand's most important, you know, customers or vendors? And it's just a, it's, it's those little things because people, I'll be honest, I work much harder for people that take care of me. Who does it? Sure. And it's not that I work harder, but it's a, that little slice of my heart and soul. When you really take care of me, that just shows up. And if yeah. you can win that over, that's that's what it's about. So. Yeah. All right. Any final words before we wrap? Just send the thank you note. And, send you know, it. <laughs> yeah. Your, your mom was right. Send the thank you notes. I resisted when I was young. It took me too long. My teenage daughters, I'm getting them on the wagon, but just send, send the thank you note. Beautiful. Okay. So Christian mentioned letterpress and I have a dear friend who, um, does custom, she creates custom cards and papery and just does beautiful work. And if that is not for you or that is not in your budget, get a set of thank you cards. You can get them, you know, 
You can order them online. You can go support your local business, a local stationery store, and get a set of cards so that you always have them. If you have to like, oh, I have to go buy a thank you card, the odds that you're going to follow through is going to be harder. So remove the resistance and go buy yourself, you know, a $10, 10 pack of cards, a dollar card, have a couple of stamps on hand. And it's really fun to brighten someone's day in such a small little way. And also, as we've been talking a lot, if you've been a long time listener, you know, it's about your personal brand. All right, friends, as always, I thank you for being here. If you have any questions, you can email me at hello at jillgriffincoaching.com. You can comment on the socials. And as always, I will see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.